know, he's talking about the positions and the titles, and I'm thinking, wow, I have that position up there, cyber and intelligence. You know, it, it sounds like it's a big thing, right? I know some of you also have those big titles. Hi, Rosemary, I can see you. <laughs> All right, so I handle cyber and intelligence for East Africa for MasterCard, so that includes Madagascar, Mauritius, and the Indian Ocean Islands. My background is not in IT, so please save your questions. Those ones of, you know, which nodes, codes, APIs, all those things. No, I mean the sales. So today we're going to talk about SMEs and how we basically build a cyber resilient society for them, okay? So I'll leave some space for questions at the end, but please don't make them ticky. I'll just tell you. Um, we'll get back to you what you usually say, and then we don't get back to you, all right? So, um, I want us to define what an SME is. Oh, there's a screen here. <laughs> I didn't see this. <laughs> all right, so, I was looking at the numbers in our economy, and as it is, um, most, I mean, the GDP, the economy is pushed by the SMEs. You, we agree there? So we've defined our SMEs in terms of number of employees, and that defines the amount of risk that these systems are actually exposed to. So small, micro, and medium. So micro enterprises are 10 employees. So talk about your M-Pesa business. A person who has like three, three M-Pesa deals. Talk of somebody who has a salon, a salon or a person who runs maybe a spa, they would have few number of employees. Then you're looking at small enterprises. So small enterprises are 10 to 49, and then medium are 50 to 99 employees. And you're seeing that this um, number of people employed under this SMEs category is 90% of the Kenya labor force. So meaning everybody is there. We are just privileged to be probably the top 10 percentile that is not probably actively pushing the SME agenda, right? So I consider us, people seated here, I'm assuming we are all part of the 10 percent that is not part of the 90 that is um, pushing the agenda. Then 14.9 million Kenyans, that's a big number. I know you're wondering, where did she get the statistics from? <laughs> Anybody asking that question? I got the statistics from K, is it K, Kipra. Kipra is a site that does government resourcing, technology, and things like that, and that part of resource. So it's, it's a government body that does statistics for that, all right? So I think you can see the rest. And then you're looking at the funding that most of these SMEs put in, 80 0.6% is from general savings. I'll get to why I'm, I'm setting this background. 4.2% get loans from families. So you take a loan to start a business, 4.2%. 5.6% actually qualify to get a bank loan. Do you know how difficult it is for an SME to get a loan? So these people, what you've seen is they are probably employed and then they get a loan and then they quit then go and start up a business because SMEs actually push their business through Shylocks, through unregistered vendors, uh, lenders and stuff like that. So this percentage of the 5.6% is people who, you know, you are employed, you said, okay, I have this idea, I want to quit. You take a loan when you're still qualified, then you leave, you start your business. That, that's what you are seeing. Then 1.4% chamas and 0.4%, they are doing... Um, Circles, circle savings. So what, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about the resourcing. We all know that cyber solutions require a lot of financing. I mean, for, can you imagine a person who's running, let's say, uh, a barber shop, and they have a database of their customers? And you know, there is the payment, the payroll, they are paying suppliers. So they have like a mini system, and that's an investment. So most of them say, you know what, ignore that, let's just use 
books. Let's just use receipts. So that in itself affects how many of our, you know, SME players adopt and use technology. Any question there? Let me just ask a random question. Would you, <laughs> for those who have taken probably a loan, started a business, and there is co conflicting priorities. There is stock, there is rent, there is salaries, then there is cyber security. I mean, where does that play in the list of priorities? Do you think this SME will think, ah, let, me, let, me, let me divide this amount that we need for stock to buy a security solution. And for security solutions, it doesn't have to be complicated. It could be small things that we look at in the next few slides. Has it moved? Okay, yeah. So, sorry, I thought I was going to speak to people who don't know what cyber security is, but let's just skip that. <laughs> I've tried to simplify the definition, so ignore that part, just block it out. You guys know what it is. Let's just leave it there. Even this common type of cyber attacks. <laughs> I think that one is, um, we all are aware of what's happening. So maybe I can give you um, examples of what we've seen. The privilege of what we get at MasterCard is we have a global network and we're able to see many, many faces of what's happening in different economies. So what you're seeing as the biggest challenge for SMEs is um, just phishing attacks. And, and you know, we look at phishing as th that big deal, you know, that email that came in and, you know, click here and your passwords went. So from SME perspective, we can look at phishing as, you know, the m thing, where you have a somebody seated at the teal and then they are called, mimi ndiyo mkubo wako, fanya hivi, chukua pesa, nitumie kwa hii namba. And then they do that and money goes. So social engineering all coming into play and affecting how SMEs do business. So let's look at how, let's say a mamamboga. Well, mamamboga is too low. They wouldn't need cyber security, would they? <laughs> let's talk about a business like um, a spa, for example. A spa is a good business and they need your data. They need this kind of solutions to help them uh, run their business. So saving your contacts, saving the supplier list and all that. So how do you identify, how does an SME put together a risk um, plan? So one is to identify what are the risk, possible risks. Yeah, so um, I mean, what are the possible risks that an SME could probably go through or a pharmacy? A pharmacy, for example, they, there's this pharmacy that has three locations and they have a system, you know, and the systems are not really foolproof. We all know that, right? They're just running on probably Excel, updated on, on Sky Clouds or, or something like that. And that is very easy to be penetratable. So what, have, what, what you're thinking is this, these people need to have a plan on how to safeguard themselves. All right? So number one is identify your assets, the physical assets, your stored information, data processes, and all that. Most of them don't know. Don't know, I mean, where can the risk come from? What's happening? What do I have? What, what is even that information, whatever that is precious to me that will be used against me or my business? Most SMEs don't know that. They just know, you know, cash, physical cash, or bank. They don't consider this data that they hold for customers as, as um, something that is important to them. They don't consider their bank transaction uh, reports and statements as something that sh they should be safeguarding. So they need to identify, okay, what are the things that are important to me as a business and how do I move that? Then they need to identify threats. So for SMEs, it's very basic. It's either physical or electronic. And physical is where somebody can just break in, carry all your machines, your laptops, steal your phones, and disappear. And then you have to take another loan to start over again as an SME. Or you have to go to a Shylock and get financing for that. And I'm sure, I mean, if they can operate without this laptop, they will. All right? So you have to identify your threats. 
Then number two is identify vulnerabilities. So on-site or off-site. So for example, if I know I have friends who run SMEs and their receptionist goes home with their phone, with a, you know, a customer can call and I go home. So hello, this is uh, the summer sea. Yeah, how do you place your order? You know, so that's a, a resource. Probably it's not even backed up. The contacts are not backed up. So identify, I mean, what is the risk of doing this or carrying the phone? What is the online potential of somebody infiltrating through my basic system and taking information? I mean, their greatest fear, what you've established is competition. If, if they can lose data to their competing chemists, that is a problem. They are not looking at if I lose data, what exposure of these details am I, of my customers am I putting out there for them. So I need to identify the vulnerabilities, then cl clarify the risk. I'm sure most of them think, you know, my greatest risk is losing, losing my business. So, and then the final thing is how to mitigate the risks themselves. All right? So these are the best practices of what you been able to establish for small enterprises. It's very basic for, I know for you guys you're thinking, this is just mafanyanga every day. I mean, but for an SME, this is a big deal. Probably they don't know what 2FA is or multi-factor authentication is. So something like just simple. Uh, this is your email. For you to access, you need to get an SMS on your phone. They need to be brought up to speed with such basic things that for professionals like yourself, you're thinking, ah, that's given, you know. Then we also need to have security awareness and training. Most of them don't know the risks. The, the biggest risk they're assuming is when my shop is broken into and my stock is taken or when my staff runs away and they have the information of how I run my business and they're able to use it with my competitors and that. So we need to also offer a lot of training on the capabilities and the risks that are actually facing this SMEs. Then the other thing that I've had here being discussed is about policies. I mean, there's no very shallow, uh, I mean, you, what you're saying, I was just smiling and saying, you know, <laughs> we need legislation that is actually practical, applicable, and can be cascaded down. Now, if you tell an SME that if your systems were hacked and you know you lose money, or the person that was working for you used the system, they give somebody else, and you tell them to pay 300,000, like, hey, that's my entire stock. I mean, so we need to come up with ways of how these policies can actually be put into daily and practical running of, of such businesses. Then there are security tools like antiviruses, and if backing up, a laptop is stolen, somebody is you know, back to square zero. Where do I start? They didn't back up. They don't back up. They don't know. So let's, as you're seated here, you know, we are thinking these are very basic, but these things are very key to that person who's running an SME, a micro organization, or even just a small business out there. All right? Then vulnerability scanning, there are solutions that can do that, but that works more for organizations that are plugged into other, other systems. So, yeah. Any question there? I think we've already talked about the incidence response plan. Um, I was smiling when I came in. Uh, some the panels, panelists are talking about, you know, when you have an attack, what do you do? Most of us, you just shut it down, shut the system down, shut it. Shut it, we'll figure out what to do. We need to come up with a plan. You no know, organizations like MasterCard, we have BCP plans. You know, if this system is down, switch to DR. If DR is not working, there is another option. So we need to actually help our customers or SMEs that you deal with be aware that, you know, yeah, when this happens, uh, yes, I might be the one-man show I am, or maybe all decisions are made by me, but can we come up with ways of actually quickly redeeming what's happening and what's, what's not? Then they are availing, evaluating available resources. So some of them quickly, what they do is run to the police. Then you go to the police, the police are like, Ati, mutu alikuhak, alikuhak aje. So you have to start, they have to start explaining. They themselves don't know how to explain it. They are saying, me ni mambi watu na mzoto wangu, kuna mtu alihak is system, na pesa imeenda. So we need to also help them learn how to evaluate 
um, the resources available and who. Do we have the something they also talked about having a support group sort of where if something happens in my space, there is a place I can report, look at previous cases and maybe come up with a solution that solves that. So we need such a scenario where SMEs or people who are dealing in such spaces are able to actually just go in, tap from information, ask questions, you know, I'm stuck here. We don't have such a resource. I don't think there is, is there? Maybe for you professionals, but for business people, I doubt there is. All right? And then documenting. Of course, we can't expect them to document, but that's where this um, space where we have a support group comes into play. All right? Uh, I think I'm done. I've, I've really tried to, <laughs> to stay within my 15 minutes, and I'll open up for questions. Please don't ask me hard questions. <laughs> Yeah, Gen, Gen X. Okay, Gen Z. Oh, all right. Um, hi. Hello. I I do believe it will be a tough question, but not it's a tough the, question. But not for the mm. technical bit of it. So, okay. Uh, okay, let me compose my thoughts. So, I hope it doesn't come out with bio or anything, but I've noticed that when most people are talking about SMEs and cyber security and all, majority of them are major corporations. Mm -hmm. Like now, you've come as the face of MasterCard. We have this other big, huge corporation talking about SMEs. Mm -hmm. So, isn't it ironic that it's now huge corporations with very uh, distinct uh, Structures are trying to show small businesses how to build up their cyber security solutions. I'm not imagining if I'm from an SME and such a huge organization comes, it, it will be more likely you'll and subconsciously project the practices a huge organization mm -hmm. has to this SME. That's why we were talking about cyber security and someone asked, people don't have funding for zero trust and all those things. So where is there's a disconnect so who is the best stakeholder to approach the SMEs to talk about them is it for the SMEs themselves to learn about these things and it will be for it will be much easier if an SME who's experience in cyber security talks mm -hmm. to the other people because mm -hmm. you talk to them in the language that they really understand, understand, right? And also for such a presentation in a forum, don't you think it would be better if the SMEs themselves were here as part of the stakeholders because anyway the audience is made up of professionals of huge corporations. How will they transmit this information to the SMEs themselves? So, yes. so that's a good actually when I walked in I spoke to there was a guy there, I'm like, I thought there are going to be SMEs here. These conversations going on are for techie guys, and my presentation is tailored to this particular people. So at some point, I felt like, you know, you've been kicked off your, your balance. Like, okay, anyway, I just have to do it. So that, that, that's, that's true. So we need to actually figure out how we reach out to this. Now, let me speak from a MasterCard perspective. Um... History, history has it. We've been playing with the big players, the big banks. You know, even medium banks are some of those that can't afford. They can't afford the solutions we offer because the cost of these solutions are high. I mean, we can sweep out an entire profit for a half year just by the cost of acquisition of, of that tool. So some of these solutions are not cheap. Now, we have... We are working on a strategy that's actually going to be rolled out very soon. It's called MasterCard and MCDS, MasterCard Small and Business, Small Business. Um, it's a wing that is going to handle the small players. So, for example, what you're looking at, let me just give you what's, what's happening right now. We know phishing is one of the biggest things that affect SMEs. Now, what you're doing is you're giving them free training free training, telling them, you know what, if you get a malicious email, how do you check it? How do you know this is malicious? Yes, yeah, so if you click on it, how do you actually remedy it? So we are giving them free training, we are giving them free phishing simulation, so we are telling them, okay, yeah, give us your email, so we send a 
assimilation. So that's just a small way we are trying to, to do this. But also we are coming up with light solutions. So we have this heavy, big investment kind of solution, but now we are moving into developing light solution, light versions, where they can you know, just quickly plug in that will not require them to have an API, you know, and a sandbox and all those things for them to connect. So we are looking at ways where we can actually bring them in and then reduce the cost of this and help them to actually um, play. Because, you know, yes, they are really trying, but they're already disadvantaged. It's like putting all your eggs in this basket and then you fall with all the eggs. I mean... Uh, okay, maybe, where do they put eggs anyway? <laughs> maybe in the fridge or somewhere, and the fridge falls, something like that. But uh, we, are, we are actually, I, I like what you're saying. So this is a challenge to you guys. I know some of you are entrepreneurs, you're thinking about what you can do. This is an opportunity. There is a gap. It's clear. There is a gap. SMEs don't have the, the support, the tools, the knowledge that they require. You as professionals, come up with ways of you know, just mitigating that and giving them the, the, the solutions and the resources they require. Um, we have three solutions that we, we give those that come, come to us. So we just allow them to use our resources for free, especially like for malware, you know, malware detection, vulnerability scanning. We have all those that we give them for free. We are not where we want to be yet, but we will get there. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Manyala. I work with a company called Rob Research Limited that develops softwares and do digital marketing. Uh, to be specific, uh, whenever we do softwares in Kenya, we have a big challenge because of insecurity and fear. I don't know what Master Card uh, Foundation does to people like this. You go and put a software in a very big place and they say, uh, can you assure us of security? Uh, will, our, will our data be safe? We have that challenge a lot. Then also because we do a lot of social media marketing, we make company trend by the way digitally fit uh, for good reasons. What challenge, the big challenge we have is that people sometimes put fake or insecure information online. Is there technology, is there a way this can be detected until you can be able to know the source and what do people do to uplift people who really they want to be digitally fit by the, but they don't have an option, they don't have a way to go there because they fear. Thank okay. you so much. Hey, fear is big. Eh? So we have, we, have, um, we have a solution where we allow, I, I for, I'm forgetting the name, but we allow startups. It's called a startup what? Uh, my colleague is there, I don't know if he, he knows the name. There is a startup uh, kind of studio where if you have a unique idea, you come in, you pitch it, you're able to be supported by very professional um, data scientists and developers who sit with us, beef up your solution. They even help you sometimes to take it to market. It's happening in our region in Dubai, in Qatar, in Kuwait. Probably we've not done it in Kenya per se, but it's coming down. So we have, we have that capability. We've done it before. But I think now, as for, for us as, as Kenya, I don't think what you were saying earlier, how do we communicate? How do we communicate that this is there and, and these are the people who've done it and, and how do we access them? Because, you know, you will send a LinkedIn message to a person you've seen a title as head of, and probably they'll just ignore you because that's not what they do. We need to have, a, a, like, a body. And these are the people here. You're the developers. You're the people who come up with these smart ideas. Have a body, a team, a support group, a system where you can come in, put in all your creative ideas, and then see how we can, as MasterCard, we can come in and support you. The other thing I know that most techie people are afraid of is the idea of being stolen. So once you come up with that pool of ideas and then somebody takes it, they sit up and you know that. So, I mean, it's your original idea. Do you have proof? Yes, you said this is what you do. I've added in some salt and pepper. It's looking different. I mean, so, but we can, we can touch this after this. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good day.